Welcome, welcome, welcome to Unfinished Livestream. That's right, we're here and we're still not done yet. I just want to welcome you to tonight's service. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it speaks to you. I hope it challenges you. And, and I hope that it helps you to actually go out and do a little bit better than what you've been doing. So um, everything's pretty much canceled. Not really. We do have our Sunday morning Zoom class. I want to encourage you to be a part of it. Uh, next week, we are going to split and do guys only. I'm really excited about that. We're going to do girls only and guys only. It's going to be done via Zoom, and I'm super excited about it. You should be too. You should join in and get to be a part of that. We're going to blast out the links for all of that on the youth texting system. If you're not a part of the youth texting system, you should be. Contact our church, and they'll help you figure out how to sign up. Um, and because I don't want to just put that information out there on the interwebs for anybody to see. So with that being said, let's go ahead and pray and we're going to open up tonight's service. So bow your heads, close your eyes and let's pray. Father God, I thank you because you're amazing and awesome, Lord, and we get to be a part of your amazing and awesomeness. Lord, I pray that you would open up our hearts today to be able to receive a word from you, Lord. Lord, it's hard whenever we're disconnected and we're not together to be able to receive that word from you, to be able to, to, to let it impact us. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to make that extra effort so that the word can dig deep inside of our soul so that it can grow and it can produce fruit. Lord, I pray that you would be with us in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen.
world in a sense is kind of shut down. And whenever I was praying and I was asking God about that, you know, just what should we be doing during this time besides the obvious of seeking him more? He said, I've shut the whole world down and it's time for the whole world to look up to me and ask why. Find out why. That's what he wants. He wants us to seek him right now like never before. That's how we're going to we're going to stand strong. That's how we're we're going to overcome what's next, you know. With everything I believe going to be opening back up. I believe that there are principles that he wants to teach us to go forward through this next stage of of returning and opening back up. What are we going to move forward with?
Father God, I just thank you today because I know that you're not malicious and, and you don't have bad intent, but everything you do, you do for us because you love us, because you are kind. Oh, Father, you are good. Oh, Father, you love us and, and you show your love for us and the actions and the things that you do for us. Father, I pray today that you would help us not to blame you for the bad things that happened, but to recognize that you have a way of taking the bad and taking the hurtful and taking the hard things and turning it and working it to your good. Does that mean that you cause it? No. Oh, but Father, you're still in control. Today, I pray that you would help us to have that singular thing thought knowing that you are a good God. Yes, you are just. Yes, you are holy. Yes, you are righteous. But you are kind. And you love us. Help us today, Father, to return and pay that love forward in our actions and in the things that we do. Be with us today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Y'all can be seated. I just want to thank y'all for tuning in and joining us today. I know it's um, it's not easy, and it's real easy to just di get disconnected at this time. And I I'm just very encouraged. I, I get discouraged when I watch the numbers of people that watch this when this premieres, but I get more encouraged as I, I, I look at the numbers throughout the week. And I know it's not about numbers, y'all. And, and I, I, it, it's, I'm not trying to be a YouTube star uh, uh, furthest thing from my mind in fact I want my students to see this and if nobody else does I'm really okay with that because <laughs> I, I don't need I don't need my name to be out there um, in fact I, I don't put my name on the post very and so it's not always easy to find it by my name because it's not about me it, it's not about what I want but I'm encouraged to know that that my students can be encouraged and if you're out there and you're not one of my students hey that's okay too i love you and uh thank you for joining in and tuning in with us um so last week we talked a little bit about the new normal and the things that are changing and and have changed in this world and but more importantly the things that have to change inside of us right and so we're going to continue that a little bit today and my title if i had one would be don't believe the lies Right. Don't believe the lies, because if we look out there, there are plenty, plenty, plenty of lies for us to find. Right. There's plenty of lies for us to believe if we're looking for it. In fact, if you just want to find something, you can Google search it up. Almost anything you can imagine, somebody's going to be out there and support whatever thing you want to believe and whatever thing about the coronavirus, whatever thing about life in general. There's there's people that will support you. But Unfortunately, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean that it has to be true. Just because it's spoken on TV, you would think that it would really have to be true, but that's not necessarily the case. And y'all, you, you would be so surprised, I, I guess maybe not, the lies and the things that are just misconceptions, misinformation that is out there that I keep hearing. And, and from silly things to absolute ball face lies, that the only reason to repeat this is because you're deceitful. Things that are out there about this virus, things that are out there in general, the numbers that come out that are, are falsified and the numbers that are manipulated and twisted so that, so that they can invoke fear and, and try to counteract the faith. It's, it's so crazy to me, the things that are out there that are just deceitful. But that's nothing new, right? That's not a coronavirus thing that there's lies out there. That started way before the coronavirus, way before the Internet. There were lies. There was deceit. There was people manipulating facts, and a manipulated fact is always a lie. I don't care how true all the statements in the fact are. When the intention is to deceive, it's a lie. All right? I, I, I've said it before. Uh, uh, your, your mom comes in and asks you, hey, is your, uh, uh, did you clean your room? And you think to myself, yes, I did clean my, my room. Three years ago, I cleaned my room. And so you answer yes. And, you're, and, and you believe, you know, I'm telling the truth. I cleaned my room. But you know 
your mama meant, did you clean your room recently? Okay, maybe she didn't word the, the, the question the best. Maybe she should have said, is your room clean right now? You can tell parents that have multiple kids because they're very careful in how they craft a statement to make because they don't want to get caught in that little loophole. And, and, you know, and, and, but at the same time, we, we knew what they meant. And when we said, yes, I've cleaned my room, we, we know we're lying. We know we're deceiving, and by, by doing that, we're lying. It's just the truth, okay? Um, and, and, and then they turn around and they ask you, they say, are you lying? And you say, no. And you think to yourself, I'm standing. <laughs> I'm sitting. I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah. We play games. We play word games, right? And that's why a lot of times we got to be very careful how we say things because people will play word games back with us. We need to be very pure in not just the words that we say, but the meaning in our intention and how we say the things that we say, because there's too many lies out there, right? There's a lot of lies that we believe about ourselves. If, if we're really being honest, there's a lot of lies that, that we want to believe about ourselves. So, some of us um, get a little bit arrogant and we think a little bit much of ourselves, and, you know, as we find meaning in this virus and all the things going on, I, I, I think humbling a nation. I'm not saying that's God's meaning, but I'm saying that'd be a good reason. I'm not God. His ways are better than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. But the Bible does tell us that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. And, and I think that humbling is an important thing that we just kind of miss out on sometimes, you know, that, that we, we get a little bit arrogant as a nation. And in and, and, and some so ways, I understand why we get arrogant, because we can provide for ourselves, we can take care of ourselves. And so we don't have as much of a need for God in the, in the material. And so we kind of get busy doing other things and we lose our desire for God in the actual and so we get so full of ourselves that there's no room for God inside of us you know I serve a great big God and I've learned in my life that the more that I can decrease the more room there is for him to increase and this world's not about me this life's not about me this life I live is but a vapor in existence and I want it to be lived every bit for God's purpose and his glory because he's eternal and I'm not Right. The lies that we tell ourselves, though, we look in the mirror and we say to ourselves that I'm not good enough. I, I'm not much. Right. We do it. We do it in the in, in the way that we look. We look in the mirror and we say to ourselves like, man, nobody's ever going to love me. Nobody's ever going to going to want me. Nobody's ever going to like me. And we tell ourselves these things, whether we say them out loud or not, they're lies. I, I, I've told those that know me, y'all have heard this before, but years ago, God gave me that revelation knowledge just in a quick moment. And I'll be honest, I didn't like myself. I didn't like a whole lot about myself. I looked at myself and I didn't see much. But one day I was looking in the mirror and all I saw was junk. And God just spoke in just such a, such a knowing, such a, a, a strong knowing and told me, he says, I made you. I'm like, yeah, God, I see that. <laughs> and he says, and I don't make junk. And all of a sudden, there was just such a deep understanding that I had that if God made me and God doesn't make junk, that it means that I'm not junk. You know, the Bible tells me I was fearfully and wonderfully made. And every time I insult the way that I look, I think I'm insulting myself. I'm really insulting God, the creator. And I'm telling him he didn't do a good enough job. Oh, and I would never be the one to tell God that he didn't do a good enough job. And so, so the truth is, is I'm not junk. I'm treasured. God sees value whenever he looks at me. And God has a plan and a purpose for my life deeper than the things that I can understand. His plan for me is so deep that he can't even show it to me all at once because my head can't contain it. He's got to give it to me in stages so that I operate in trusting him and not doing things my own way. 
That's, that's who my God is. But we tell ourselves the lie that I'm junk. We, we, we say this four-letter lie to ourselves, all right? And to me, it's almost worse than a curse word. We say, I can't. I can't. I can't do that. I can't do this. I just can't. I can't change my speech. I can't do this. I can't understand this. I can't, I can't, I can't. I wish we could feel like a flick to the nose every time we said that word. Because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible tells me that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. This I can't garbage isn't for the believer. Now, if you don't love Jesus and he's not your Lord and Savior, you're right, you can't. But if you're one of God's creations, if you are one of his children, if you've asked him to be your Lord and Savior and you've committed your life to him, you can't isn't anything that should be in your vocabulary. You can't is is a word that is a lie because I can do all things through Christ. I can. I am a new believer. This new normal is starting. But we tell ourselves that over and over and over. I can't. And I love what pastor said Sunday night. That you know what? If you really believe you can't, you're right. Because we, 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 we curse ourselves from the very get-go. We speak cursings over ourselves from the very get-go before we even try and we say that we can't. And I'm telling you, I get it. Because I understand the, the fear of failure that gets so great whenever we really believe that we can't do something, that we would rather fail because we didn't try than, than fail by trying. And I'm going to tell you, failing be, by, by never trying is the only true failure that there ever really is. That whenever we get up and do something for God, as soon as we got up, stepped out in faith and tried to do something for God, we're winners, no matter the outcome. We can fall on our face and say, oh, well, that didn't work. But you know what? We're winners because we had the faith and our faith was stirred up and we got up and we did something for him. But the problem is, is, is we get to be lazy. We let, we let fear of failure tempt us into this laziness of, you know what? I'd rather not even try than, than really try hard and fail. And we believe the lies. We believe the lies that we can't. We believe the lies that we can't bigger than we believe the God that says we can. Why I think it's so important to recognize the lie is because we serve a God that it is impossible for our God to lie. Because by him speaking something out it becomes truth. It becomes absolute. It becomes reality. He didn't, he didn't form light. He spoke light. Let there be light. Boom. There was light. As soon as he says it, it becomes, it becomes reality because it's truth. Y'all, it's such a deep thought to realize that, that why, why there's so, so much importance on the spoken word. Why I think it's important for us to pray out loud. Why I think it's important for us to speak blessings and not cursing is because the power of life and death is in the tongue. All right? God formed man. All right, He didn't speak man. And he breathed life into man. He took his own breath and did CPR and, and took breath from his own body and put it into us and gave us life. Okay, that's awesome. All right. So every word that we speak, y'all know it's impossible to speak without breath. It's impossible to speak without breath. So every, every word that we speak requires breath, which requires the gift that God has given us, the breath of God that he put inside of us coming out of us. And it's that significant. Y'all don't believe the lies. Speak the truth. But the problem is, is, is when we speak something out and we speak out lies, we're not God, so we can lie. All right, we shouldn't, but we can. And, and so we speak things out. And whenever it's not the truth, we're not speaking the blessings over our lives. And worse than that, when we speak it out, we start to believe it a little bit more ourselves. And we say to ourselves, I can't. I can't do that. Last week, 
Last week, I talked about the new normal and, and, and the new normal that comes whenever we have a relationship with Christ and we get up and we live for him. And that becomes our normal day, a walk with him. Every day we take a step. Every moment we take a step and that step of obedience, one after another after another, it becomes a walk with God, a stroll with God. Sometimes we're moving fast and it's a run with God. Sometimes we move a little bit slower and it's a it's it's like the old people walking around at the mall on Sundays or on, on the morning, you know, it's not fast. Um, but some people are power walkers and oh my goodness, they get the like, I don't know why pulling your arms in makes you walk faster and they gotta get the little scoop going on and they're just they're just going to town and they are power walking. Their whole body is walking. It's not just the legs, the whole body it takes to walk. That'll preach. But anyway. We need to learn not to believe the lies and have that walk with God. And we need to learn the truth that God says about us. All right. And I want to tell you some of that truth today that we find in second Peter chapter one, starting in verse three. All right. So we started a new walk last week. And a lot of us want to believe for ourselves that, you know what? I can't help myself. This is just who I am. This is the way I was made. This is, this is something that's so big. I've always dealt with this. I've just learned to accept it. Foolishness. No, I'm not accepting the bad things about myself. I'm going to work on them. I'm going to give them to God. And I'm going to allow him to transform me from glory to glory to glory into the image of God. I'm not who I was. I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become brand new. So we're going to read it right here in verse 3. It says, his design, design, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Though through these things, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. This is what I want you to understand today. God has given us through Christ Jesus, through that salvation, the gift to be able to follow in the godliness that God has lived, that, that God, Jesus came and lived as he walked as God but man on earth. We say to ourselves, I can't do that. I can't be that. But that's foolishness because I'm not who I used to be. I couldn't do that, but I can now. Right? We say, well, that's just not who I am. I'm shy. So was I once upon a time. I'm not who I used to be. Y'all, the closer, the knowledge, we got to add knowledge. The closer I get to God, the more I understand about his word, the more I understand spending time with him, the more I understand listening to him, the closer I get to him and the closer I am to him, the more those things that held me back, that were corrupting me, that weren't what they were supposed to be, lose their grip. The more the lies have to flee because the truth has set me free. Hey, that rhymed. The closer and the more knowledge I gain, the understanding that I have helps me to understand the ways that I live, that I can live godly. I can't help myself. Yes, you can. Y'all, it's foolishness to accept negative things about yourself and just th think that thought process that says, well, I'm just being real. I've always had a gossiping tongue. That's just who I am. My, I, I'm just, I just, that it just comes natural to me. Yes, that's called sin nature. It did come natural to you, but that sin nature has to die so the godly nature in us can raise up and not be who we used to be. Y'all, if that sin nature is alive and rampant inside of your life, what does it say about the spirit man inside of you or lack thereof? What does it say about us whenever I can just make excuses about why everything that I believe is okay instead of finding the truth and applying the truth to my life and cleaning up everything? It's like a hoarder, right? Have you ever seen a hoarder? If you're a hoarder, I'm sorry. All right, have you ever seen a hoarder? A hoarder's houses sometimes can get nasty, 
They stack things up. They never want to get rid of anything. They save everything. All right, you watch the TV show Hoarders. I watched on, on an episode of this, this criminal show that I saw. They had a hoarder on there. And, and you walk in and the room stinks. The room looks so bad on TV I could almost smell it myself. That musky, like nasty, rotten garbage smell is nasty. And we make excuses why I can't let go of any of my garbage rather than cleaning it up. To my wife, I'm not saying it's okay to get rid of my stuff. It's not junk. It's important stuff. Okay, but, but in our own walk, in our own lives, there's junk that doesn't belong, y'all. And I'm going to be real with you, and I may lose some viewers, and that's okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you, there's some junk that doesn't belong in our lives. There's some literature that we read that we know is not godly literature, and it doesn't belong in our lives. There's some movies that we watch that aren't godly movies that we know. We know because we work so hard to make excuses why it's okay. There's some YouTube videos that we watch that we know we ought not be watching, and it doesn't matter if there's, oh, there's nothing bad in there. Is it godly? Is it, is it causing you to think more of God or is it causing you to be distracted and pull away from God? There's things that we want in our music. Yeah, now y'all getting, getting mad at me. In the music that we listen to, y'all, there are things that we know we ought not be listening to. For me, in my house, it's Christian music, all right? For me, in my life, it's Christian music. If it ain't Christian music, it ain't on my phone, it ain't on my radio, it ain't on my nothing, all right? And that's a hard stance that I've taken, there's some songs I like that I won't listen to. I love Ray Stevens' Mississippi Squirrel Revival. That is such a great song. I won't listen to it. Why? Because it's not a Christian song. It makes fun of the church, but it's not a Christian song. But that's a hard stance that I took in my life because I don't want to make room for garbage in my life. I want to clear out the garbage so that there's less of me, so that there's more room for God to live inside of me so that I can be more like him. There's things inside that we make excuses for over and over and over. And we think just because we got away with it, it's okay. Y'all, it's not okay. We think just because we've seen other Christians do it, it's okay. They're poor examples. That doesn't give you an excuse to be a poor example. Y'all, we need to clean the house. We need to recognize the lies. We need to stop believing the lies and recognize the truth of God who says that he's called us to be different. He set us free from all that garbage. It's for freedom's sake that he set us free. Why on earth would he set us free so that we could go live in a garbage dump? That's not what God called me to be. I want to live in a palace in heaven. I don't want to live in the dump. But it means that we got to clear out the garbage and we got to clear out the junk and we've got to make effort. We've got to make effort. We can't just say, oh, well, this is just what happens. It's just what I feel like. We've got to work at it. We've got to be intentional with it. We've got to take our lives and put aside the things that don't belong that we know don't glorify God. And you know what? If you're doing something and you kind of feel a little bit, maybe I shouldn't be doing it. Quit. Stop it. That may be the Holy Spirit trying to con convict you and help you to put that thing aside. Let it go. What in the world could we have that's worth losing our soul for? Y'all, sometimes that means we got to make hard choices. We got to delete stuff that doesn't belong on our phones. It may mean that you've got to delete your Snapchat account. It may mean that you've got to limit your time and, and have somebody set up a screen time password on your phone and only give you an hour a day on your phone because you know it's too distracting and you are, you are losing your time with God because you're spending it frivolously doing dumb things. What, what is it going to take for us to recognize that God is real? Heaven is real. Hell is real. And there's a lot of people that come to churches every week and sit in the seats and are going to find their way to hell. Why? Because they refused to clear out the garbage. 
They've refused to make those hard choices. And they believed in their own minds that it was okay because it came natural to them. If it feels good, do it. Those are lines that, that translate to if it feels good, keep doing it to hell. Y'all, God calls us to be like Christ. And I promise you the cross didn't feel good. I promise you there's a lot of things that he would have been doing that he could have, he'd have, for himself, he'd have rather been doing aside from the cross. But he denied himself. He took up his cross. He sacrificed as an example to us. And I want you to understand this because I used to listen to music that wasn't Christian. I didn't see it was a big deal and I made hard excuses why it was okay. I used to watch movies that were rated R and you know, I was, I was at one of our church ladies' house. Thank God for godly examples. I was at one of our church ladies' houses and uh, she lived right across the bayou from me whenever I lived on Douay Street. And I was sitting over there one day and they, they weren't being condemning, they were being loving. And she told me that they don't watch rated R movies. And, and I just, I'm like, why? And she's like, because if they're rated R, they're restricted. We probably, it's probably not good for us. From that moment on, I didn't watch rated R movies. I never thought one, twice about it. Never occurred to me that I shouldn't. But I realized that's junk that doesn't belong, that I can get rid of, I can shed, I can put aside. I didn't watch The Passion of the Christ, even though I believe that, I, actually, I think R is a light rating. I think it probably should have been like NC-37, um, but, but if it was done accurately, but, you know, they rated it R, and, and they probably just couldn't show everything. I, I didn't watch it. Why? Do I think it's wrong? No, just because of me, because I want to hold a standard. I, I, I want to I keep that in my own life, and am I condemning anybody that watched it? No. That movie saved a lot of people. That movie's called a lot of people to turn their lives to Christ, and I'm okay with that. But I'm talking about our own lives. We make excuses for the junk that we know doesn't belong because we like our junk. And we become hoarders of sin instead of making effort to shed those things. When I, when I give my life to Christ... The first thing that ha has to happen, right there, faith is born. And I need to add to that faith goodness. I need to start shedding off anything that's not good, that's not of God in my life so that I can be good, so that my life can be known as good. Don't believe the lie that says you can't do that. Because if you couldn't do it, God wouldn't have told you to do it. God doesn't cause us to call us to something to fail. He calls us to succeed. He calls us to, to, to be more than conquerors. Those garbage, that, that, that sin, those things that, that we hold on to, that we're afraid to even admit that it's there. Because if we admitted it, we may need to do something about it. It's time for us to do something about it. It's time for us to humble ourselves and say, God, this doesn't belong here. I know this doesn't belong here. That thing that we sneak off to do in secret, that thing that we, 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 we can't be in the room with other people because we're afraid and we're ashamed if anybody were to find out. Maybe that needs to go. And our secret place needs to be a place where we go and find God instead of the place where we go and we hide and we, and we find evil. So I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes wherever you're at. And I want you to just think about your own life. Right now in your spiritual life, are you growing or are you dying? And if you're dying, I want you to ask yourself why. 
I can almost guarantee it's because there's other things that have become a distraction that we make excuses for why it's okay and we pursue those things instead of pursuing God. And it's killing you. It's time to let him go. And maybe you've tried to let him go before and you say, but I just can't. I've tried. Maybe try more than just you. Through Christ, I can do all things. Maybe, maybe let God help you in that a little bit. And you go to God and you say, God, I know this doesn't belong. Help me to let this go. Maybe you say before that I've done this before and I meant it, but I found myself right back here. Do it again. Don't believe the lies that says that, that, that that's just who you are. Be something new. Be something better. Be what God's calling you to be. And if that's you today, I just want you to think. Think about being free from that thing. What that would look like. No shame. No having to worry as soon as somebody walked in the room to make sure to close the computer or hide the phone. No, no trying to get away with it and not get caught and sneaking around. No guilt. But more than all of that thing, it's more room for God in our lives so that he can magnify and we don't have to have the junk. If you're ready to get rid of it and let it go, let's pray. Father God, you know the things that are inside of our lives that don't belong. You know the things that we bury so deep and we hide. And you know all the lies that we've told ourselves, the curses that we've spoken over ourselves when we said, I can't. Oh, Lord, I just declare all of those things broken right now. Oh, because I believe that your word is bigger than anything else. That, that your truth is bigger than all of those things. And that, that you have come to set us free. Oh, Father, help us to deny ourselves just like Christ denied himself. Help us to recognize the things in our lives that don't belong, that shouldn't be there the sin, that we get all afraid and offended if somebody calls it sin, but we know deep down inside of ourselves that it's sin. And help us, Lord, to say no to that, to clear that out so that we can make room for you. Father, it doesn't belong, and we're not going to have it anymore. Set us free, please. I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it's not enough to just pray and say that I want to be free. Now it's the time to be free. Turn from those things. Seek God. When you're tempted, seek God. Whenever, whenever your mind is, is, is so consumed by other things, open up your Bible. Whenever, whenever you just feel this compulsion that I just, I, I, I'm going to mess up, spend time in prayer. Talk to God. Tell him what you're going through. Whenever you mess up, don't let it be an excuse to give up, but get up. Repent. Turn around and do better. Love y'all guys. Hopefully we can see each other soon. Amen.